Hello and welcome to the AWS and VMware webinar series. Today's topic is a deep dive into VMware Cloud on AWS data center extension use case. My name is Samir Kadu. I'm a partner solutions architect at AWS and joined with me is Oren Root, Director of Product Management at VMware. Hey, good morning, everybody. Yeah. So just a quick reminder, this is an ongoing webinar series. So we do have recording links to our previous webinars as well. So feel free to eventually click on those links when they're made available to you and access those webinars as well. We will also have future updates in regard to future webinars that we will be publishing as part of the series as well. So today's agenda is we'll go over an introduction to VMware Cloud on AWS, the benefits and use cases. Also, we'll dive into the data center extension. Also, we'll go through customer success and we'll have a wrap up. So some of the things to keep in mind are that customers are seeking an integrated and hybrid approach. For some customers, hybrid is the preferred operating model. So for example, with on-premises, they use familiar tools and processes. They want to leverage existing investments. Customers want to maintain unique hardware configurations, and they want to even have granular control over the placement of applications or data. And then with the public cloud, being able to scale faster, reduce costs, establish a global footprint, and pay-as-you-go model. And then also being able to access a broader range of services. As customers move to the cloud, they're looking for ways to get the best of both worlds. Additionally, if they can avoid purchasing any additional new hardware, they want to avoid that. They want to avoid any refactoring. And eventually, they want to also avoid any replatforming or as well as leveraging existing investments, skill sets, and tools. Some of the common challenges with hybrid cloud adoption come down to having to work with multiple virtual machine formats having incongruent networks between on-premises and in the cloud, having operational inconsistency between the way you do something on-premises with your VMs versus what you might be doing in the cloud, and then having to learn new skill sets and tools as far as leveraging the way you do something on-premises versus the way you do something in the cloud, and then having to have multiple control and monitoring mechanisms in place. Whereas the way you do something on premises might be different than the monitoring mechanisms that you might be utilizing in a cloud based environment. Though with VMware Cloud on AWS, we're looking to eliminate these challenges, meaning you don't have to worry about multiple virtual machine formats. Your VMs stay the same VM format, that does not change. And you're able to even stretch your network from on premises to VMware Cloud on AWS as needed. As far as operational consistency, your VMs are the same, so nothing really changes as far as operational process around your VMs from that standpoint. And then also, you don't necessarily have to learn any new skill sets or utilize new tools, because what you have today, as far as being familiar with the vSphere GUI, you can leverage that with VMware Cloud and AWS. And for the most part, any tools you're leveraging from the aspect of your monitoring or even controlling your environment, you can leverage that as well with VMware Cloud and AWS. And then also with VMware Cloud and AWS, you do have the added benefit of utilizing your VMware software and AWS infrastructure in place. So the VMware SCDC is running on AWS bare metal. This is sold, operated, and supported by VMware and its partners. It's support for containers and VMs. It also allows for on-demand capacity and flexible consumption as needed. You do have the full operational consistency between your on-premises SCDC as well the seamless workload portability and hybrid operations, the global AWS footprint as far as reach and availability, and direct access to native AWS services. So your VMs can communicate and even utilize AWS services as needed. Even your on-premises environment, if you wanna have, for example, hybrid link mode set up between on-premises and VMware Cloud on AWS, you do have that single pane view as well that's available to you. So you have that way to even just migrate your VMs from on-premises to VMware Cloud on AWS or even vice versa, and then leverage this 
native AWS services as needed. I just want to emphasize that here, basically, what we're doing is we're taking the flagship compute, storage, and network virtualization products that v this VMware has, vSphere, vSAN, and NSX. We add on top of this VM uh, vCenter management, um, and uh, and we deploy this on top of Amazon EC2 bare metal infrastructure. So this is a bare metal solution. This is not nested or virtual and virtual. It's the same architecture and operational experience that customers have on-prem um, and allows basically to uh, gain instant value from that hybrid experience between VMware uh, and AWS. Yep. And then being that the fastest growing VMware Cloud and AWS technology partner ecosystem exists, so you do have multiple partners from different areas as far as like cloud migration, data protection, DevOps, networking, storage services, security, monitoring, analytics, and even cloud management, there are partner ready for VMware Cloud on AWS. So as you can see, this is a growing list that is expanding. You do have multiple partners that are readily available and can be utilized with VMware Cloud on AWS today. So some of the customer driven use cases that we've seen from our customers are data center extension. So we'll get into the details around footprint expansion on-demand capacity and test dev environments. And then also you do have the disaster recovery as far as maybe having a new DR site, maybe even replacing existing DR site, and maybe even complementing an existing DR site. Then also there's cloud migrations. It could be application specific, it could be data center wide, or maybe you're even going through an infrastructure refresh. And then lastly, next generation apps, as far as applic application modernizations, new application build outs, or even having hybrid applications take place. So as far as data center extension, so pretty much one of the key things to keep in mind is that we have, we have been listening to our customers and partners. You've told us to bring VMware Cloud and AWS to you where your business operates. So we have worked with jointly with VMware, obviously, and AWS together to bring this offering globally as we do a rollout to multiple regions that AWS offers to you. So VMware Cloud on AWS empowers you to leverage and the massive scalability and global presence of AWS to rapidly, seamlessly, and cost-effectively extend your data center capacity and expand your regional footprint. So if your organization is undertaking new large-scale projects, the elasticity and scalability of VMware Cloud on AWS can help you leverage existing VMware investments and expand your operations into new geographic regions by seamlessly connecting your workforce wherever they are in the world. This on-demand solution enables you to easily extend your footprint into the cloud and get VMware consistent enterprise-grade environments on AWS. We recently announced our Asia-Pacific region, our first Asia-Pacific region, the Sydney region. So now Asia-Pacific and multinational customers can rapidly deploy a VMware Cloud on AWS in the Asia Pacific region. And this brings our service to the US, Europe, uh, and Asia Pacific markets, increasing the total availability uh, to five regions that we have in the past 12 months. And then with on-demand capacity, when you need temporary capacity for spikes that might be caused by major events, let's say you're in the retail space, Black Friday, or there's Prime Day, if you're in the video, maybe World Cup or some sporting events such as the Super Bowl is coming down, and maybe you have other types of services such as tax preparation or gaming even. Rather than build out your own on-prem data center capacity for something that's temporary, you can utilize VMware Cloud on AWS from that standpoint. And then with test dev, Maybe you want to try out something new without affecting your on-premises production environment. Let's say you want to stand up an environment for faster prototyping and without iteration, having to wait for the infrastructure that's needed. Now you have a quick, easy way to do that. Now you're also able to modernize your code and connect to other native AWS services as needed where it makes sense for you. And then some of the data center extension benefits. 
you're allowed to have on-demand consumption with elastic capacity. Data enterprise great capabilities and complete operational consistency, the single management strategy to simultaneously leverage your on-premises and AWS environments, and then also the ability to instantly scale your host capacity as needed. So rather than having to worry about having extra hosts in your environment, you do have that option to just scale out as needed. So let's say you want to add additional host or compute to your environment, you do have that option to quickly do that. So this comes down to with the on-premises versus VMware Cloud on AWS. So with on-premises, the request until ready for consumption on average for an additional host is roughly 86 days. With VMware Cloud on AWS, from request until ready for consumption on average for an additional host, roughly 10 minutes or less. And then with workload mobility, you do have several options that are available to you. So you can utilize even hybrid cloud extension, which is offered with VMware Cloud on AWS. You do have the option to even have a live migration take place. So let's say you want a vMotion a VM from on-premises to VMware Cloud on AWS, you do have that available to you. Maybe you want to even go forward with a cold migration. You do have that option as well. And then maybe you want to leverage content library. So let's say you might have your templates stored in a content library, and rather than having to manage separate templates between your on-premises environment and VMware Cloud on AWS, you could centralize them in a content library where you can manage your templates just from that content library in itself and utilize those templates to be deployed out to various VMs, either on-premises or even in VMware Cloud on AWS. And then also you do have enhanced vMotion capabilities that are available to you as well. Just the major differences here, uh, if we're uh, looking at those, basically it's the uh, split between what workloads you want to move using cold migration. Live migration is really our vMotion. So running um, running machines while, while your application is still running without re-IPing uh, the application, losing any packets, moving it directly to the AWS cloud. Uh, and the hybrid cloud extension really allows for bulk migration. Uh, and we've had uh, many success stories about customers that have basically um, migrated in uh, about a sixth of the time they've planned for the, uh, the migration. So these are kind of the options uh, that you're looking at. And just to add to the point uh, before about uh, the previous use case, the use cases we've, we've been talking about, I mean, the idea is um, because you are renting an entire um, machine, um, you can run it as hot as you want, which means uh, you can get, uh, you can oversubscribe and you can do the same in your on-prem environment. So you don't have to have that reserve capacity and you can burst out to the cloud knowing that you have that only 10 minutes to get that additional host added running and VMs running on it. So now as you're looking at that cloud migration, the, you know, you're wondering how much, how many uh, machines should I buy? Uh, looking at my workloads, um, look at the profile of my VMs, what should, you know, how should I plan for that, that cloud migration? And so for that, uh, we have, uh, we've come up with the VMC sizer and TCO calculator. What the VMC sizer is going to do for you is it's going to take, it's kind of like a very advanced spreadsheet that we have uh, on our website. And uh, it takes into account, um, you know, their CPU, CPU uh, cores, RAM. Um, it knows exactly what hardware we're going to use. Um, we, it takes into account uh, a bunch of assumptions uh, that we're making on, um, on, on reservations. And it provides default based on your average uh, customer deployment. Um, what you'll do is uh, you'll put in your specific use cases, um, limitations on, uh, on CPU, memory, um, storage, um, look at uh, IOPS per disk group, bandwidth, uh, et cetera. And, uh, and it will account for all the new features that we have, for example, uh, dedupe and compression and multi-AZ. Uh, and we'll give you a, a breakdown of what the uh, recommendation would be for how many hosts, what type, um, and, uh, and what the cost would be for on-demand one year and three year. And we'll also give you a TCO calculation comparing it to your on-prem deployment, showing you how much would a, 
the similar setup costs you, uh, including all the costs that you have for running this on-prem, compared to running this on VMware Cloud on AWS. Now, this is all good, uh, but the next step is really looking at what you actually have deployed on-prem. So the way we look at the migration planning is kind of like the first step would be looking at, you know, the, the output you'll get from your assumptions um, based on the VMC sizer. And the next piece would be to actually look at your deployed environment using our, our migration assessment that's based on our cost insight tool. This will discover VMs that you have running and look at, um, at your actual memory, storage, um, and, uh, and compute usage on-prem. And based on that, come up with a more accurate, um, more precise assessment of what you'll need to actually do the migration to VM or cloud on AWS, how many hosts, et cetera. In addition, we also offer um, the network insight tool that will give you uh, assessment of network costs. What it does is it looks at the interactions between your applications on-prem and looks at the bandwidth cost that you'll have, the egress charges that you'll have by looking at what actually is happening with your applications live on-prem. Um, once you do that, then you can actually, uh, will come up with, um, with a, uh, a recommendation. In addition to that, we'll also give you a, um, an actual migration plan file that you can upload directly into our hybrid cloud extension that will uh, consume this and actually perform the uh, bulk migration based on that plan. In between, you have the ability to do what, what if scenarios, send out uh, pretty reports to socialize this and, uh, and get buy-in um, and, um, and decide what the best migration plan for you is. So if I'm looking at, um, at the migration assessment, basically what it will do is um, we'll download a little OVF uh, down to your on-prem environment. You'll deploy it. It will scan your VMs, your applications, the interaction between them, uh, and give you this breakdown. Um, with Network Insight, you'll get, as we mentioned, that breakdown between uh, the interactions between the applications. And uh, we'll assess the egress cost uh, based on the, uh, the application topology that you define. Feed that into our hybrid cloud extension. Uh, and uh, actually perform the migration. So we're going to look at a, a quick demo to see kind of what what uh, you know a migration plan uh, with a Lovada scenario would look like. So as you log into VMware Cloud on AWS, what we have done is we've actually added and included the migration assessment as part of the uh, the offering. So you'll be um, You'll see it from the, uh, the drawdown menu. And if you load it, you'll be picking from the uh, VMs uh, that you have. So we'll start a new migration assessment plan. And we can base, pick based on application, based on VMs or tags. Um, so we're going to pick um, a few applications from these uh, five clusters, a few VMs from these five clusters. And, uh, and we see we have 150 VMs. Um, we see that the, the, you can see that the overall assessment gets updated, you run the assessment, and you get this nice report that you can print out. Um, and it shows you how many hosts you will need. Uh, and it shows you what the cost would be for three year, one year, and for on demand. Now, we're looking at this and we're seeing that the storage is pretty high, it's 44 terabytes, and it's 150 VM. So we're going to go and edit this and we're going to filter everything that uh, has more than 500 gigs and we're going to filter that out. So going through these, we're going to pick all those that have more than 500 gigs, and we're going to rerun the assessment. This is an example, simple one, but an example of how we do uh, what-if scenarios. So now you can rerun the assessment, um, and, uh, and now you can see that the numbers have changed. We're only down from 44 to 12 terabytes, and we only need five hosts instead of eight hosts. Obviously, the cost has changed as well. can send this in a PDF send it to my manager, uh, or the other option would be to actually export this into a CSV, uh, which will feed into um, the HCX tool, the hybrid cloud extension that will actually perform the migration based on this plan. 
this is going to what it looks like. You get a little CSV. This is the output, and this is what's going to get fed directly into hybrid cloud extension. So if we're doing the TCO, the cost analysis, we can actually see, um, based on the cost analysis, how much that would cost me to run this same configuration uh, on-prem. So we can select the same cluster that we have, same candidates that we've done before. There's additional filtering capabilities. We won't use them here in this uh, simple demo. And we can see that the total cost is 23K compared to the 15K that we had before. So obviously, you know, here are the numbers. Um, you know, three year, obviously you get the 50% discount. Um, so that becomes very attractive. So that allows you to build your case uh, for your migration and also actually build the migration plan. I'd like to pause for a second and uh, remind everybody that we're gonna have time for Q&A uh, at the end, live Q&A. So please uh, keep on pouring those questions. Uh, we will address a few of them live at the end. So now the next step is to actually look at the um, at what happens with network insights. So if we're uh, looking at the kind of similar process, we can uh, pick by uh, cluster name and then we'll actually filter by uh, specific application. Um, skip forward, I think we've done this already. Okay, so here we select a few applications. Uh, we define those in Network Insight. We can sync those apps. And we can, we're can we gonna pick uh, a couple of these applications. So you can define an application. We've already defined them here. So we're gonna uh, pick a few and you can see the outbound connections here on the right-hand side. So once you select these applications, we'll actually do the mapping and look at the topology uh, and, uh, and give the, that breakdown. So you can kind of see the uh, the daily network egress charges we have for each one of those applications on the right side column there. Uh, we'll update that selection. And what Network Insight is going to do is going to look at the dependency analysis uh, between those applications. And you can see the breakdown of you know the interactions between the applications. And it's going to feed into our cost assessment for the egress charges that you're going to have running this on VMware Cloud on AWS. So you can, again, you can run if, what if scenarios here, um, but here in this case, we kind of see what the ego charts are gonna look like, about $2,400 a month, right? And they're added to our you know, three-year subscription, um, and you can kind of um, get your costs upfront and budget accordingly, uh, looking at one or three year. A hub cloud extension tool uh, really is a bulk migration tool. Um, what's really nice about it is that it's, it's traffic engineered, ran optimized. Um, it allows for um, migration from really any v, vSphere based environment to any vSphere based environment up to, uh, down to uh, version 5.0, uh, which is pretty old. So uh, should be compatible with uh, whatever deployment you have. Uh, has um, it, it supports um, distributed switch, Cisco, uh, Nexus uh, 1000V, and also supports Direct Connect um, and uh, has a built-in scheduler. So it really does all the magic uh, that you need to do, um, stretches uh, L2, um, really does everything you need to do uh, and makes the migration very simple. Now, with a, with a recent announcement, um, we, we also have uh, Cloud Motion. Cloud Motion really does um, replication assisted vMotion. What it means is that we can actually live move thousands of VMs without losing a heartbeat. And the way we do this is we seed with replication the selection of VMs um, and replicate them ahead of time. And when you're ready to do the cutoff, we actually do uh, a vMotion of that delta. So you actually move thousands of VMs without, again, without losing a packet all live.
Yeah, so we'll go through some of the customer success stories. So for example, with Politica, the world's largest social casino games company, it's the first to introduce free-to-play casino-style games to social networks, round-the-clock entertainment, which is accessible mm -hmm. everywhere. Some of the challenges that they were seeing is a constant process of trial and error to develop and test games. Due to their exponential growth, their data centers reach maximum capacity. And with plans to enhance their user experience, they had an urgent need for data center capacity expansion. So the solution in this case was VMware Cloud on AWS for data center extension. The business outcome was in less than a week, VMware Cloud on AWS provided Platica with an immediate extension of their data center into the cloud. Over 1,000 VMs were seamlessly migrated, allowing testing and development to continue uninterrupted. The customer also did leverage hybrid cloud extension, or HCX, to do a live migration of workloads to the cloud. So we did discuss hybrid cloud extension earlier, and as you can see, customers are utilizing it from the standpoint of giving them that flexibility and ability to migrate their VMs from on-premises to VMware Cloud on AWS as needed. And then with Trend Micro, they have 30 years of innovation, information security company. Its global customer base is, it does have roughly 6,000 plus employees in over 50 countries, development and data centers around the world as well. Some of the challenges they were seeing come down to making the journey to the cloud, required skills and efforts to re-architect, user demand for IT capacity and timely delivery, unified view and security across data center and public clouds. So the solution for them in this case was VMware Cloud on AWS for data center extension. The business outcome was a consistent central management and security across data center and multi-cloud environments. It's so meaning that they can manage their on-premises environment as far as the VMs with VMware Cloud on AWS and the VMs that exist in there as well. They're able to utilize employees which have existing VMware core competencies. So pretty much the same skill set that they had for their on-premises VMware-based environment was leveraged for their deployment of VMware Cloud on AWS. They also had a much quicker to extend their current application pools than to do a full cloud migration. And then also it freed up time for other innovations. So rather than focusing on setting up a new environment or even going through the process of procuring additional hardware as needed, they were able to quickly deploy out VMware Cloud and AWS, have it up and running, and now they were able to focus on other innovations as needed as well. So you can get started with VMware Cloud on AWS now. So one of the key things to keep in mind is you can see there is a QR code. Uh, feel free to scan it and it will take you to the web page as well. So you do have the starter single host SEC. There is a promotion, 20% off for three months. So here's a link that's available to it as well. And then also the production three host SEC. So there's a promotion for that as well for the price of two hosts. And the offers from September 10th, 2018 till November 2nd, 2018. And there is also a link in regards to that as well. And then also for pricing, there is a link that's made available if you look down here, cloud.pmr.com slash bmc dash aws slash pricing. And then that does also contain additional promotion details as well. Here's some links to additional VMware Cloud and AWS resources. So for example, VMware Cloud homepages at AWS and then also VMware's website. We also have our VMware Cloud blog that's available to you as well. So feel free to check it out as it is constantly updated with relevant blog material that's pertaining to VMware Cloud on AWS. And then also we did hit upon the TCO tools that are available to you. So feel free to take a look at the vmcsizer.vmware.com uh, TCO tool. And then also cloud.vmware.com slash vmc-aws-pricing for some pricing information. And then also one of the cool things about this partnership is where VMware has made the roadmap publicly available. So feel free to check that out at cloud.vmware.com slash vmc-aws-roadmap. So I guess with that, uh, let's get into some of the questions that you might be having. Let me take a few that uh, I see we have uh, we have flagged here. Um, sure. So the one question we have here is, uh, does east-west VM traffic cost anything, uh, or is it just inbound-outbound uh, that generates network costs? 
So the general rule of thumb is that the network costs are going to be very similar to what you're seeing with AWS Native. Um, so, um, so outbound traffic, inbound does not cost you anything. Outbound costs you um, very similar to the rate that AWS has. Uh, and then east-west traffic. So um, you know you have region to region, AZ to AZ. But what we've done here that's really unique um, is we've actually created a uh, joint en jointly engineered uh, connection between um, the VMware Cloud uh, VPC uh, and the VPC that uh, that the customers uh, have, um, and that uh, that provides a high high bandwidth, low latency. Uh, connectivity. So as long as the VM VMware Cloud on AWS SDDC is deployed in the same AZ where uh, the uh, the EC2 VMs, for example, are running, um, you have um, you have basically free uh, free traffic. You're not charged for that traffic. Um, and uh, the other advantage there, um, I think there's another question here that's very oh yes, uh, and so that gets it also gets you the advanced access to um, basically all the AWS services, all the regional and private managed AWS services uh, without incurring additional um, charges because your traffic does not route to the internet. It goes directly to that uh, to those services, to that to your VPC. Yeah, I think also related to that, uh, there was a question regarding Direct Connect as well. So you do have the available, or I guess the functionality to utilize Direct Connect as well. So let's say you, you already have Direct Connect in place, and if you want to have that direct traffic to your VMware Cloud on AWS SDC, you do have the option to leverage it from that standpoint as well. And then also there was a question regarding latency considerations. So there are some things to take into account. There's actually a pretty good blog post as far as a number of considerations to consider as well. But one of the key things just to keep in mind is that traffic will be going over your internet connection so you do have to account for what your bandwidth might look like. But then if you're leveraging something like a Direct Connect, then you do have pretty much that Direct Connect access from your on-premises environment, wherever your SDC on-prem might be located, to VMware Cloud and AWS's SDC as well. There's a question about uh, bi-directional migrations. Can they happen with vSphere 6.0 on-prem? Um, and mentions that live migration is not a requirement. Uh, just want to know if they can move back. So as I mentioned before, um, if uh, if you're looking even at just at you know HCX at the Hybrid Cloud uh, extension, uh, it can move from any vSphere-based environment to any other vSphere-based environment, starting from version 5.0. So the 6.0. whatever uh, is included in that, and so you can move from whatever vSphere environment to whatever in any direction you want. And then there's a question regarding management as far as uh, managing the environment. So this isn't necessarily a service that's available in the AWS Management Console. So to leverage it, you do have to go to vmc.vmware.com, which is a VMware Cloud on AWS Console. That will allow you that availability, flexibility, and ability to even just deploy out SDC as needed, manage your SDC, set up any networking rules or firewall rules for your VMs as needed, even assign public IPDs to your VMs, uh, pretty much controlling it right from there as well. And there is programmatic access for all of that. Uh, we are API first. Everything has a RESTful API. Um, and you can actually all see them. And we have a special tab in, uh, in VMware Cloud and AWS in the console. That's our development center. Um, we'll present you with a Swagger-like um, documentation where you can try out those APIs as well. So I see there's a question that came up. Does AWS have engineers that they can hire to help move to VMware Cloud and AWS? You know, this is something, obviously, being a joint offering. Uh, feel free to discuss that with your VMware and AWS account teams as we can help you as far as guiding you through that process. Uh, we do have several options that are available to you. Yeah, just keep in mind, this is a, a wholly um, you know, supported, provided service by VMware. Um, and so as part of this, you know, as mentioned, 
um, we, will, we will have the, the standard routes of assisting you up to anything you need to down to professional services. Um, and we are working with uh, the AWS teams and you will see that uh, talking to your account team that the AWS and the VMware teams uh, are really aligned uh, when talking to them. There's another question, uh, do we need to run two V standards uh, in hybrid cloud extension mode? So again, hybrid cloud extension is uh, basically a tool that will help you move from a, an already existing uh, vSphere-based uh, environment with the vCenter running on top of it. Um, that's all it is, it's really a bulk migration, uh, uh, bulk, bulk migration tool. So there was another question in regards to, can I set up link mode vCenter in cloud and on-premises? So you can leverage hybrid link mode for your on-premises vCenter and the vCenter server appliance that exists in VMware Cloud and AWS. So if you do want to have that central management, you do have that option. And just to add to this, we recently announced the, uh, uh, the vSphere gateway that basically allows um, the same hybrid management, that single pane of glass, uh, from on-prem uh, without actually going and inputting your credentials into the, uh, of your on-prem credentials into the, um, into the cloud vCenter. There's a question here is, uh, so my understanding is that VMs are not in my VPC. How do VMs communicate with instances in my VPC then? So the way we're setting this up uh, as part of the provisioning is uh, VMware actually uh, provisions an AWS account uh, on your behalf, on the customer's behalf. Uh, that AWS account is managed by, uh, by VMware on behalf of the customer. In that AWS account, VMware uh, creates a VPC. And in the VPC, uh, we deploy the SVC. And that, again, depends on your selection of, uh, of the AZ. So as part of deployment, you will uh, connect with your AWS account and you will pick the VPC and the subnet uh, that where your, your workloads reside. And that will tell us what uh, AZ we should deploy the SVC in. Uh, and as part of that deployment, we also uh, create um, this uh, this ENI uh, that kind of has one or ENIs that have you know kind of one leg in uh, in uh, in our VPC and one leg in yours and provide this this connection that we talked about this high bandwidth low latency connection that offers not only the connectivity to the uh, the various AWS services but also to your VMs running in your VPC and you can also control manage uh, the policies. Um, firewall access, et cetera, for, uh, for that uh, connection, very similar to how you would manage um, the, uh, the management gateway and compute gateway the, uh, for, uh, for the general SDC. So there's a question regarding backup options uh, with VMware Cloud on AWS. So you do have different partners that have been certified for VMware Cloud and AWS. So if you do want to leverage those, you do have the option to leverage that. And then even from a DR standpoint, there is site recovery, uh, which is available for VMware Cloud and AWS, which leverages your on-premises SRM as well. Uh, so if you do want to leverage that, you do have that option available to you. And I, th I think we'll have a deeper dive on disaster recovery, right? Uh, so. Be sure to tune into that when this uh, this is available. But generally, uh, yes, we do have uh, there's a bunch of partners, obviously, and there is uh, the built-in um, disaster recovery solution, the v, uh, v, vSphere VMware site recovery um, that uh, that uh, that you can deploy directly from uh, VMware Cloud on AWS and decide which VMs you want to protect. Um, very easy, simple, and non-disruptive um, testing to make sure that you have your T1, 2, and 3 uh, workloads protected.
So there's a question regarding billing as far as are you billed 100% through VMware? So one of the key things to keep in mind for your SDDC resources, so for that VMware Cloud on AWS environment, you will receive that bill through VMware. But then let's say if you're utilizing any AWS services with your VMs, so maybe you have like a three-tier web application, web tier might be EC2 instances, you might have a database tier that's utilizing RDS. So resources such as those would be on your AWS bill. Question about uh, Direct Connect here. Um, hopefully I read this uh, the, the way it, it was intended. But basically, you, we utilize your existing Direct Connects um, and you basically get a VIF um, and we route our traffic through this. So you don't need to create a new Direct Connect um, to utilize with VMware Cloud on AWS. The charges uh, are gonna be very similar to what you'll have with uh, with native uh, EC2, so uh, your port charges, you know, still exist uh, and are on the account that uh, owns the Direct Connect, uh, and the uh, egress charges are going to be from uh, the initiator, basically the, the the VMware Cloud and AWS, um, uh, which VPC, which basically means that you'll see them um, the gigabyte uh, per gigabyte charges on on your VMware bill. And then we did kind of hit upon this earlier, though, but there is a question as far as how does the networking tie into my VPC on AWS? Do I need an existing VPC or can this be done standalone? So pretty much when you deploy out your SCDC, you do have to specify your AWS account. And then once it authenticates with your AWS account, it will populate with the VPCs in your AWS account. So that's gonna allow that connectivity to be established between your VMware Cloud on AWS SCDC with your AWS account. So it, meaning that if you want to leverage any AWS services with your VMs in your VMware Cloud on AWS SCC, you do have that availability or that option available to you. The question about uh, CPU and memory specs, are they uh, are they customizable? Um, so uh, and the, the concern here is that uh, the specs I saw don't have enough RAM for the CPU. Um, so the, the specs are not customizable, um, but we do have uh, new instance set types coming. Uh, and one of the instance types that we've announced uh, at VMworld a few weeks ago was the R5 metal instance, uh, which has, um, I think, 50% uh, more RAM uh, per host. And again, keep, Keep uh, keep watching for additional instances to be uh, to be added as we go along. And then there's a question as far as can existing AWS accounts be used or with VMware Cloud on AWS? Uh, so if you do have an existing AWS account, you can leverage that. If for some reason, if you want to set up even a new AWS account, you can leverage that as well. It's totally up to you. So there was a question about the largest migration to VMC you've ever witnessed, how many VMs? So we're looking at thousands of VMs uh, that we've had. Um, and in, uh, not only that, uh, in a period that was a lot shorter than, than what it was initially uh, planned for. Uh, so planned for, I think about a year and a half uh, for a migration plan, and we ended up doing this in the bulk of it in like four months, I think from start to finish. Okay, uh, there's a question about the ENI. Uh, again, is that VPC peering or something else? Uh, so that is not VPC peering. There's a question about uh, do customers ask VMware Cloud on AWS to work with a transit VPC? So yes, we've we've heard uh, those requests before. Um, they're best practices from uh, from AWS, and uh, we're 
we were evaluating new um, solutions that would make would make this be uh, slightly easier. Question about is there a difference running VMC on GovCloud versus normal AWS? Um, so I think the uh, the question is really, you know, the same differences that you'll have running VMC versus running normal or basically standard EC2. Um, there, you know, they're still there, which means you get the consistency of operations, the uh, no conversions, um, you know, reduce risk to your uh, your projects by being able to migrate directly. Um, so all these uh, unique differences are still there. Um, the um, obviously the the added um, the added uh, uh, benefits here is that it's running on GovCloud, uh, which is um, um, again has all the benefits of GovCloud and completely isolated. Um, but the general differences are are going to be the same differences that you have between um, between VMC um, and uh, in AWS running natively. There's a question about uh, AI. Um, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say there's a question that came up in regards to how do customers use NSX with VMware Cloud on AWS? Uh, so that might be a good one to get into uh, as far as how NSX is being leveraged for VMware Cloud on AWS. And then if a customer does have NSX on premises, the additional features that would be available to them as well. Yeah. So um, so we've had uh, up until recently uh, support for only NSX V uh, in the cloud. Uh, so there were some capabilities that were not available, and with the recent addition of NSXT um, capabilities such as uh, distributed firewall, micro segmentation, uh, all these capabilities that customers are used to from on-prem uh, are available. The advantage uh, that this this will provide is that policies are actually carried forward uh, to uh, to the cloud when uh, when when VMs are moved to the cloud. So that allows for more consistent uh, networking. Uh, across across customers' environment, both on-prem and in the cloud. One thing to notice here is that uh, NSX really is um, the interface that customers work with to manage networking. Uh, it is um, there is the customers don't have access to the uh, to the underlay. Uh, that's all abstracted through uh, through NSX. Question about um, bare metal cost or bare metal and cost, right? So, since this is bare metal, is the hourly cost regardless um, whether it's uh, in use or not? So, so yes. So think about it like uh, you know, um, renting a car, right? If you you rent a car uh, and you're not driving it, you're still paying for it until you return the car. Um, so same thing here, right? So uh, you're renting the host uh, and you're um, you're paying for the whole host, uh, but the advantage here is that because it's the whole host, A, there are no noisy neighbors, and B, uh, you can load it up and run it as hot as you want to uh, and get uh, more efficiencies out of this and therefore reduce the cost, uh, the effective hourly cost per VM. Yeah. Again, this is an on-demand service, so the moment you don't need the host anymore, um, you can just return it, you can just basically delete it, um, or reduce the number of hosts, right? So for bursting scenarios, you'll be adding hosts, and when you don't need that additional capacity, um, you scale down, and then you stop paying for those hosts. Additional methods of uh, saving costs here are available very similar, like in uh, in AWS, with a subscription, which is a, um, a an upfront commitment for one or three year that would get you up to 50% discount when committing upfront for three years. So there's a question in regards to 
how do you handle the current IP versus the new IP after migrating? So you do have several options available to you when it comes down to the migration. So for example, if you want to stretch your on-premises layer two network, you do have that option to stretch to the IP scheme to your SEC and VMware Cloud on AWS. So in that case, you wouldn't have to re-IP a VM. Uh, so that is something to think about as you're going through your migration process, or if that is something that you need from that standpoint as well. And then if you do want to go through a re-IP process, so you do have the option to, let's say if you're leveraging uh, site recovery, uh, that does have the option available to you where you could go through the workbook or workflow process to even have that modified uh, once that VM comes online on the VMware Cloud and AWS side even. There's a question here, uh, you know, typical migration time frame for full migration of an environment with, say, 10,000 VMs. Um, so we've recently done uh, a uh, migration where we've, we've, we've seen I think, 50 VMs in 15 minutes. Um, so again, obviously, it you know, depends on the size of VMs, and uh, there's a bunch of assumption, assumptions here, and it really depends on your configuration, but just take that, you know, 50 VMs in 15 minutes and, you know, uh, scale up to 10,000. So you're looking at, uh, you know, 124 hours, right? So that's uh, like five days, but uh, that's like an, you know, just abstraction I'm doing without taking into account um, the actual size and everything. So. Okay, question about uh, HA and load balancing. So I have a little bit in load balancing, uh, work with VMware instances on AWS, so differences. So um, what's interesting, um, one of the key capabilities that I really like, the customers really like, uh, that we have on VMware Cloud and AWS is um, taking our existing HA and DRS, which do balancing, uh, cluster balancing as well as high availability uh, and taking them and stretching them across multiple availability zones, thus giving your applications um, AZ resiliency without changing anything in the application. So if uh, you're using a multi-AZ uh, cluster with um, that's, uh, that, that has HA on, um, if an AZ goes down, your VM will automatically restart um, on on the the remainder of the cluster in the uh, in the second AZ, so that's a very powerful capability that that our, our customers really love. Other than that, um, the other difference here is from on-prem. If we're looking at DRS, for example, DRS does a really good job job uh, balancing out uh, the uh, the cluster. Uh, what DRS on-prem cannot do uh, is it cannot add additional capacity. So it does a good job until it runs out of capacity. Um, but as mentioned before, in about 10 minutes, you can get additional hosts. So with the addition of our uh, newest uh, capability, the Elastic DRS, uh, DRS can actually go and pull in additional resources based on the customer's policies that are optimized for cost of performance and automatically scale up the cluster um, when a certain threshold is, uh, is crossed. Uh, and when the um, the capacity is no longer needed, uh, threshold is crossed uh, downwards, then the ARS will uh, relinquish the, the the host and uh, and balance uh, the workloads uh, on the cluster again. Yeah, there's a question about the uh, uh, export the VMs on, can I export my VMs in the 30-day trial single-use host to uh, S3 and then turn on another 30-day trial and re-import? So, um, so important to clarify here, this is not a free trial. Uh, the, this, is a, this is 
fully paid. It's a way to uh, kickstart your experience on VMware Cloud and AWS for less than a quarter of what it would cost to run a, a four host cluster. Uh, we have promos on it that bring down the cost to about 560 uh, an hour. Um, and after 30 days, uh, you can either scale up uh, the host to uh, the cluster to the SDDC to a three host SDDC, uh, and then keep um, keep your workloads and configurations, uh, or um, it will self destruct and you can create a new one. And yes, you can also create a new one before that one expires. Uh, and you could, um, with whatever way you choose, you could cold migrate or uh, or migrate your VMs. Um, or even if you really wanted to be creative, you can bounce it off uh, on-prem and do uh, HCX uh, uh, migration uh, to on-prem and then to your new SDVC. So yes, there are ways to keep uh, to keep going with a single host SDVC and keep spinning up new single host SDVCs. Um, but obviously, if uh, if it fits your need, but if you want to um, to move on to a production environment, um, you just scale it up to a three host. Uh, and everything will be uh, will be retained. Question about the migration assessment: Do I need to download the OVF and install it on-prem recently before I can run that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, that's an appliance that you run uh, on-prem uh, that will scan your uh, your deployment on-prem and allow and and come up with that migration plan. If you already know how um, you already know the profiles of your VMs and you know exactly what you need, you don't have to do that. You can just use uh, the VMC sizer and input the parameters over there, and we'll come up with a migration plan for you. Um, this is really for you know the, the those applications that. Um, you know, when I talk to customers, a lot of times it's not clear, you know, who built that application when they've left the company long ago, not really clear what the relationship between the applications are. And this is where this comes in really handy because it really gives you the full picture um, of what you're actually doing today versus what you think you're doing. So let's see if there's another question that we've uh, we've missed. That uh, that's good. We we will keep on answering those questions afterwards. Um, yeah. So okay. So there's another question about the consoles, right? So does this mean that the VMware hosts running in our cloud do not show up in our existing AWS management console? Uh, and how is billing handled? So I think we touched on the billing, but yes, you will not see those uh, those hosts in your AWS console because, again, keep in mind that it's not running in your AWS account. It's running in our AWS account that we manage on your behalf. Um, we connect it to your AWS account so you can utilize uh, services um, and you can utilize um, the interaction between your EC2 VMs, um, but this is really running in our AWS account. So you will not see them in your AWS console. You will see them in the VMware cloud on AWS uh, console. And I think we're right about time. Yep. And thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, also keep in mind there are gonna be uh, additional webinars as well. So stay tuned for information in regards to that on our webpage. And then also uh, we did send out a link to the previous webinars. So by all means, feel free to check those webinars out as well. Thank you for your time.